I thought it only appropriate to close the Skinned Alive chapters by sharing the bonus footage and a few more unique stories that you'll only hear here. So, hope you enjoy. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much. You might be looking at on 150, 160. All together? Yeah. How do you feel about it? It's good. I mean, it lasts longer than anybody, than any car, you know? Yeah. So, fuck, it's a great price. Hello, Funhouse. This is the tattoo area. There's a station here. I'm going to leave it to your artistic impression art. All right. What are they charging for up to We don't have prices. The great thing too is about all this shit is you can continue, you know, the background around the shoulder, you can do whatever. Yeah, no, that's the We grew up on the East Coast, near Philadelphia. We skated all the parks right around that area. There's parks all over the place, but they came and went. Actually, we got kicked out of school. In 82, went to live with her dad in Mexico. They had a real thriving skate scene down there. Waldo Autry and Jay Adams and those guys went down to Mexico. We skated all those parks. We grew up pretty much down there skating with those guys. Like half pipes were the big thing. We had to build one in our yard in order to keep our skateboarding alive. Back in the day, we were always stoked to session with Jason Jesse. Totally. Fred Smith and the guys from Boston were always great. Texas by far. Texas were those guys were the coolest. Craig, Jeff Phillips. John Gibson. Out here in California, we used to like Owen Nieder, John Schultes. That's about it, really, that I can think of. Everybody else seemed kind of soft. Okay, this little guy here. The little hot rodder, he's pissing on his skateboard. He's farting too. And then this one here was drawn by an old friend. He tattoos now in Philadelphia. But it was actually tattooed by a girl, Linda Tobin, that works here at Outer Limits where I work. We, we've always drawn since we were kids. Must have been, jeez, man, since we were two or three, just to kill time. Our mom got us into it. It was all scribble. We were just practicing on each other, just fucking ourselves up. But most of the stuff really doesn't have a, a real theme. There's no real meaning. It was all designs that we kind of liked. But at the time, you know, when you got the tattoo, there was maybe something going on in that part of your life. I would say I specialize in tattooing. There's nothing that I will segregate myself to saying, well, I just do this or I'm only into that because I can do everything. There's nothing. I don't think there's anything that I can not do. I do it all. I love, though my favorite, I love to do single needle, small, fine detailed stuff. Realistic. There's my brother tattooing Julia. She's the most tattooed woman in the world. We did all her work. She's tattooed all the way down to her fingertips. There she is right there. So that's like our kind of, in a way, claim to fame. It's great. It's pretty funny. And there's Jason Jesse. We did some stuff on him in the early days when we were still practicing. We've tattooed people like Danny Way. Uh, the Pappas brothers. Who else from Skip? Markovich got his first tattoo from us. Yeah, Chet Thomas. Chet Thomas is one. Mm. Some guys from XYZ. Darren Never Navarrette, that guy. Darren Jenkins. Darren Jenkins. It's fucking great, that guy. Yeah. Did you tattoo Allison Hannigan? Yeah, I tattooed her. She was not a skateboarder or anything like that. She was a girl in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I tattooed her before she was the uh, band camp. Before she was on once I show the movie American Pie. What was the guy doing Morocco? Who? Which guy? I can't remember. Some skinhead guy that was telling us about building homemade machines. And he says you gotta get the rotary motor out of a Walkman. What it was Rocco and put a you put a uh, guitar string attached through a, to through a spoon no with a spoon holding the the motor the ballpoint on. pen barrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
That was a fun and we game. Made, that was pretty fun making the homemade machines. That was pretty fun. Remember our tattoo kit? Who's got the tattoo kit? I don't know. Brian Ridgway found it. Remember how the metal the metal can? <laughs> metal can. <laughs> we had toilet paper. Toilet paper to wipe the blood. That's exact <laughs> exacto blades and little cups and black ink. I never stopped to think how unhealthy it was living outside doing homemade tattoos in the car. <laughs> we didn't even really figure that we make up our own stuff, and even when we did decide to make up our own stuff, it was simple punk rock stuff, like uh, a cross with some writing in it, or... Maybe some skulls and some fire. Banners with dates, punk rock dates. Because a lot of the youth that tattoo today, they're not influenced by any of the old, you know, the old biker mentality, the old, old outlaw mentality. A lot of them are into it because of their lifestyle and the artwork that goes along with their lifestyle, whether it's skateboarding or snowboarding or surfing. Well, the logical evolution of skateboarding would not have had ta tattooing involved in it at all. It wouldn't have. Not at all. We brought that into the whole thing. But we used to collect too. We used to get tattooed by other artists. That's why our last our last name was done by uh, Robert Hackney. We had some stuff done in Arizona. From then on, it we got kind of pushed into the mainstream really fast down there because we speak Spanish. We were born down there, and we don't look Mexican. We're not. We're just by birth, but we you know we speak Spanish. We have ever since we were kids. Anyway, we can communicate with them, and they take they take us more seriously than they do their own people sometimes, anyway. Because they look up to America and American tattooing. To lead. And Canada. So, we're helping steer tattooing in Mexico and Spanish speaking countries in the right direction. With the articles in the magazines and we doing seminars. Sure. We do seminars every sure. year. But it spreads, see, it'll spread from Mexico all the way down. Last convention there was people from Brazil, people from Venezuela, Argentina. Wasn't there someone from Colombia down there last time? Yeah, Colombia, Costa Rica. But nobody thinks much about those countries, but really they got a lot of good tattooers down there. A lot of skateboarders too, especially Brazil. Those guys go crazy. See how much influence we've had on the whole skateboarding world? As far as people getting tattooed? Look at even Dwayne Peters, when we met that guy, he had no tattoos, just one little dumb tattoo on his arm, and that guy's totally covered. If it wasn't for us, that guy wouldn't have any fucking tattoos. He's got stuff all over his face. So tattooing is pretty much, now it's accessible to everybody. I told you about that girl that she pissed and shit and puked. Yeah. All in ten minutes, she pissed herself, she shit right in her fucking, right in her pants, and she threw up all over her chest. And before I could throw up or piss or shit myself, I went outside and had someone else clean it up. Did you tattoo some guy's dick down there recently? <laughs> I tattooed this guy's dick. He goes, I want my girlfriend's initial with a rose going through a heart on the helmet. I said, all right. So he pulls his dick out and he's got this barbell thing going through his dick with these two big balls on either side, almost as big as a dime on each side. Not as big balls, but the balls on either side of his fucking jewelry. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's like, halfway through it, like he didn't say nothing the whole time. And then when I'm tattooing him, he says to me, Steve, you know what, I'm not a faggot or anything. He goes, I'm not a faggot or anything, but God, you got beautiful eyes. And is that your natural oh, color? Uh. Is that your natural color hair? <laughs> and I was so shocked, I couldn't believe he's fucking talking shit to me while I'm holding onto his dick. <laughs> and then this guy that sits behind me tells, tells the guy, you better shut up while you're ahead. And he did. <laughs> he's like, I'm not gay or anything. My boyfriend is. <laughs> we tattooed a lot of hookers and pimps when we worked in Hollywood at Purple Panther. And in Venice, there was a lot of freaks there. There were shootings every weekend down at Muscle Beach. It used to be Sundays when the shootings were happening. Every Sunday. He didn't show up to his appointment that one morning because... Chris. Because he was dead on the beach. And I was sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and he never showed up. I was like, 
Knox found him. I mean, Knox saw him down there. Where the fuck's Chris and Knox? Because I think your appointment's down there on the beach, just laying down. <laughs> like, you know, man. And then this guy Danny comes down and says, no, Chris isn't showing up today, he's dead on the beach. So we went down and looked at him. A lot of shit down there is most, mostly drugs, like a lot of people. Not a lot of people, but... Well, it just depends where. Most like, of the freaks. I like, remember all the freaks we were tattooing in San Diego, they were all on Crystal. And almost everybody that we've ever had in our bands were all drug addicts. And we weren't. We were always straight when we did drugs or drink. Well, our band was called the Exploding Fuck Dolls. The Exploding Fuck Dolls went on from about 1991 to about 1998. And the beginning of the Exploding Fuck Dolls was me and Steve, a guy named Kevin, who died, and a guy named Devin Gilmore. And we played a lot, man. We played just in... How many shows would you say we played? Just like eight, eight months that lineup was around. You know? Lots. I can't even count. But anyway, after that, after Kevin died, we got Blaine Peters singing for the band. That's when the band was the biggest. We we had packed places. We get like five, six hundred people per show. And at the time, that was around the time when um, Pennywise was starting to get big. Pennywise was getting big. No doubt, open for us. That was before they had Gwen singing. We had uh, Sublime. Was like they were nobody. They just opened this little show. This show like. It was um, an outdoor festival in Huntington Beach, and they opened the show, and we headlined. So when they were playing, there was only like 10 people looking at them. Now, everybody buys their records, and we don't have shit. What we're doing currently is we're working with Dennis Tech. He uh, used to be a guitar player and founder of a band called Radio Birdman. Anybody who's into punk or the Australian music scene during the punk days would know who he is. We just released a record with him called Dennis Tech and the Golden Breed. That's uh, two. It's a project that's taken two years to do, but it's just because everybody's busy because he's a doctor now. So that's out there. We've got tours set up coming up pretty soon in the summer and stuff possibly in uh, next year, next January. Oh yeah, Knox drew this. So the like playing a skateboard? Is he on a skateboard? He's on a skateboard with some fiery waves behind him. I just like to get covered. That's it. So they give me a hundred bucks. Yeah, some flying. Yeah, yeah. I like those clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually wanted to meet Freddie with talking about doing that. Freak. Still breaks it up because I thought I never had to do that. All the way up. All the way up. Well, that one's gnarly. This guy is gnarly. I already have one. Oh, again. Hold up. Yep, go. In now. In! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Get a real one. Twisted East Coast oh, fucker. The medium fights. guys are bastard. I think it's a woman. What did they go? See, people like Scarlet and they ain't scared. He already has blood in his own. Ah, ah. <laughs> fuck, fuck, get it off, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real gangster. <laughs> Little bit. Little left taps, left taps. Red.
This is before we met Fred. This is after. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you hang out with Fred Smith for fucking too long. You turn into a fucking freak. Do <laughs> you want to see the, the notorious penis that he threw in there without me knowing it? Oh. I saw that like the next week. I'm like, hey Fred, you know, I got a dick. And he goes, what, did you find the pussy? Right there. Show him your ball bags. Show your ball bags on him. I Check out those ball bags. <laughs> Freddy's the king of fucking <laughs> sneaking shit in there. The cover up, I did all this shit drunk for myself. <laughs> cover up. Ball bags. Bunch of ball bags. Fucking bastard. <laughs>
the influences are so, are so strong out there, I mean, you're gonna get sucked in doing something. Yeah. But I tattooed them when I already had like 15 years under my belt, so they got some good shit on them. For them, that was sticking a needle in somebody and leaving your mark, and they'll remember you for the rest of their life. You know, somebody could watch a film that you're in and forget about it. But once you mark somebody's body, you know, you're with them forever. It all revolves around tattoos and Mark Mahoney and the good boys. Everything, right? It's all mathematics, art, for art's sake. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Antisocial fucking nightmare. That was the turning point for fuck. I'm an idiot. That guy was a king. You know, just wanting to be. Just a um, attention faggot. Like, I want I want everyone to not talk to me, but I want to have tattoos. Like, you know, that little thing. Like, just yeah, you see this shit. You don't have that. Crazy, but just a he's just a sweetheart. We got pulled over. Pigs aren't digging this. This is cool. This is it. I don't even think they are cool now, you know. But they're way more accepted. But whatever. We saw live flesh. Remember on the. Walls, that was insane. When you're then Oh yeah, like okay, yeah, I want it right here. And then yeah, he sees the other tattoo. Like <laughs> and then you know, you go through some years of life and realize, poor fucking kid, just retard. Like Mark just going, Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> poor asshole. They should make tattoos illegal. I remember going to Tattoo Land, and uh, before Tap Boy Club, there's a Dead Boys poster on the wall, Young, Loud, and Snotty. Just, I'm not even into them yet. And Mark just telling us stories about. It. Now I, st I just started tattooing, I just talk about like rancid and shit to kids. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, he punked me, you know? Like in front of my other homeboys, like Bart and Steve. I was really embarrassed. That's enough. Uh, it was cool though, whatever. He rules. You guys are dicks. You guys gotta go. Dicks. Fucking a complete individual. And if I fall, if I do something cool, it's all me. Not like oh fucking Jimbo Jackoff fucking made the touchdown and I fucking blocked him for it. You know what I mean? It's like fuck it. I don't even care about that shit. I, I was thinking get tattooed and I want to skateboard and I want to do it because of me. You know what I mean? And and if someone goes like oh there's fucking Kyle that tattooed fucking skating retard, then it'd be like, <laughs> oh well, there he went, you know what I mean? That's fucking the choice he fucking chose, so, so be it, you know? And that's, that's what it is. Like, that guy's like, doesn't care about fucking anything or what anybody thinks about him. He was just like, hey, this is me. I'm gonna fucking jump on you. If you move, that's fine, because I'm fucking tough and I'll bounce back up. I, I was thinking, like, I want to fucking have Clay Decker's fucking skin like uh, I'm gonna be tattooed bottom line <laughs>
you know, a little rude, started to get a little heated. And then this big dude in the back was making needles, and he just got out, done about like eight, ten years in the joint, you know. He comes down, he says, hey kid, how much you want to get that for? And he's like, oh, I want to get for 40 bucks, you know, like being a smart ass. like, all right, so I'll do it. He's like, yeah, you know, just being smart ass. That's the way you get things done around here. So he says, come on back. So he, you know, brings him back. He sets up everything, gets his razor out, you know, and he fucking sprays him down with alcohol. He shaves him down, sprays him down with alcohol, shaves him down. And then he starts spraying him down some more, spraying him and spraying him and spraying him and spraying him and spraying him. Puts a cigarette in his mouth, lights a cigarette, and then lights a kid on fire. Kid fucking freaks. His friend's trying to put him out. They both go running out the door, yelling and screaming. That was pretty. That was probably one of the, my most favorite stories that I've heard in the tattoo right, business. Right. At least one that I could tell. You get what you pay for. Yeah, you, you, you get what you pay for, for sure. Hot. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, Eric and I, um, we just got done skating. We Actually, it was me, Eric. Me, you, and fucking uh, Mickey, oh, huh? Mickey, was there? Regular Wednesdays. Yeah, regular Wednesday skate night. And I got done skating, and I put on this leather jacket that this uh, that? No. this guy gave me that he worked at a tattoo shop I used to work at, you know. And um, he said he said one day he's like, hey, you want this leather jacket? You know, I'm all fuck yeah, it's a nice jacket, you know, because I ride motorcycles, so it's like it's one of those old 40s, 50s cop jackets, you know, kidney belt straps, all that stuff. It's Dude, nice leather jacket. I'm like, yeah, you don't want it. He's like, With well, since I, you know, since I've been in the joint, he went he went to prison for about four years for manufacturing speed. And um, he's all, don't fit me, you know? I'm like, oh, cool, you know, it fit me perfect. So we got done skating, I put on my leather jacket, and I've been wearing this thing around for like three fucking months. Like, avidly. This was my jacket, you know? And I was like, fuck, I wish there was a pocket for my cigarettes to fit in, you know? And I opened it up, I'm like, oh, fuck, I never knew. You know, I've been wearing it for three months, I didn't know there was a little pocket on the inside. So I go to stick my cigarettes in there, and they wouldn't go all the way down. I was like, fuck, there's something in there. So I pull out this little, like, wallet pouch. I'm all, what the fuck is this? Must be, you know, must be my homeboys, you know? Before he went in the joint. So I fucking unzip it, and there's a, f like, five-year-old fucking... Boy, how big was that pack of speed? Like about... Uh, like half the size of a... <laughs> half the... Yeah, that's a lot of speed in there. About five years old. Sitting in my jacket. I've been running around for three fucking months. With that huge bag of speed sitting in my jacket, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> so I just threw it in the bushes. And I was like, fuck this, I don't want any part of this, you know, I'm through with that shit. <laughs> and uh, Mickey o went and he grabbed it, and he's like, what are you doing? There's some kid might pick it up, you know, he doesn't know what it is, OD or something. So he fucking grabs it, and uh, the bag's falling apart from being in the bushes and shit, and he like walks into the skate park to, straight to the bath. Oh man, we ain't done yet, you know, that's the thing, you know, tattooers don't get to retire, there ain't that kind of money in it, so... The idea is to have as good a time as you can, and you know, mate, you know, do as good a tattoos as you can. And... Fuck, are you serious right now? Final thoughts? Yeah. Okay. I wrote them down. Okay. In the form of about 14 suicide notes. Has anyone done that to get them removed to get more? I see some of these kids who are real young getting tats all over the place, and sometimes I think, you know, if you don't wait until you get in your 20s, you may be making a mistake by just jumping into something you think is cool now. But when you're in your 30s or 40s, it may not be cool. So you better think about what you're going to do for a long time. Don't just get something because you see it or you saw something similar that you think it's badass. You better make sure that tap means something to you for the rest of your life. A lot of the youth that tattoo today, they're not influenced by any of the old, you know, the old biker mentality, the old outlaw mentality. A lot of them are into it because of their lifestyle and the artwork that goes along with their lifestyle whether it's skateboarding or snowboarding or surfing. Well, the logical evolution of skateboarding would not have had ta tattooing involved in it at all. It wouldn't have. Not at all. We brought that into the whole thing. Yeah, so you know, I just get tattoos. You want to see the, the notorious penis that he threw in there without me knowing it? Oh! <laughs> I saw that like the next week. I'm like, hey Fred, you know, I got a dick. And he goes, what, did you find the pussy? <laughs> right there. <laughs>
Show them your ball bags. <laughs> your ball bags on him, dude. Check out those ball bags. <laughs> Freddy's the king of fucking sneaking shit in there. Cover up, I did all this shit drunk for myself. Cover up. Bunch of ball bags. Fucking awesome. <laughs> goes out to my buddy Jason Jesse. Props. Thanks for the goods, bro. When you ain't in it, somebody's got your back. Thanks, man. Okay, final thought. There's no selling out ever. It's just getting your fucking message to the marketplace for future generations to see. That's all. Fuck it. Die when you die. <laughs> Job well done. Sure grip. Best skateboard company. Hey, I'm Eric Dressen, and my life revolves around skateboarding. I'm getting tattooed. One, two, three. Boom! I'm gonna take and I'll take charge. I'm gonna drive the fastest car. There's a pain factor involved sometimes. Fall down, go boom. Get scratched up for about two hours. A little bit of pain both. We are the heaviest tattooed skateboarders around. At all that, we started off the whole thing. We, we're going to take credit for that because that's just the way it is. I mean,